Well, I think being agile has become a little bit of a buzzword in the world to date. But what does it really mean? Well, we've seen agile and the agile methodology used a lot in IT industries, for example, when software companies come together to be able to create software. We saw it during the pandemic with pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer and BioNTech develop a vaccine together. As we know, increasingly volatile, uncertain, and often unpredictable market conditions have demanded unprecedented levels of adaptability, not only within, but also between organizations. And as you're about to hear, the procurement industry is no exception. Our next guest today says that AI, digitization, ESG, and the circular economy are all important, but that we need to find new ways to manage them all at a sustainable pace. Moko Kleider is considered a global thought leader. He is the president of the Lean Agile Procurement Alliance. He's a serial award winner, keynote speaker, and author too. He is disrupting commercial roles and approaches based on agile values and principles in a number of industries, both public and private together. He says that agile, and in particular, Lean Agile Procurement can deliver some fantastic new complements solutions for strategic procurement. Let's give it Merco a very big round of applause. Thank you, Katie. Salam alaikum. Where's my slide? As I prepared for this, this talk, I always try to connect with the country, with the local uh, community and I got in touch, I wasn't aware of your 2030 vision. This is awesome. Congratulations for that commitment. This is really awesome. From a procurement perspective, it scares the shit out of us, right? I just put here uh, the line. Um, I think, I, I can imagine there are thousands of procurements to be done, right? And uh, you don't want to source old stuff or the current technology, you want to do inno innovation, you want to include sustainability, you want to uh, circle economy and so forth and so forth. And this is something that hasn't been done yet and is a, is a leading example for the work that we do. Today, I want to inspire you with nine, nine success stories from all around the world, in different stages, how ways of working can have a positive impact and what we can learn for procurement. Um, the stories will be, I will start with the two most progressive organizations or two examples of it, and then uh, we will also learn how you could start your adaption so leading examples, starting small, starting around was a question before to Mark, where to start, how to convince? Well, it's about solving problems. It's not about a new approach. It's not about a new checklist. It's about solving problems. Digitalization will support us in many ways. It will free us up so that we could solve those problems. I would like to start with a healthcare organization take you out completely out of the context. Uh, they are at the very end of the, the bar, uh, very progressive. Uh, and instead of talking too much, I want to play a short video. Please, um, this is the founder, boss, uh, and, and he was speaking at the Global Peter Drucker Forum. So a forum like this with global sea level leaders. So just to set that in context, because he has some very provocative statements. We built on this a simple idea. Let's create small teams with a maximum of 10, 12 people. So at the moment, we have almost 1,000 teams all over the country working, uh, self-organized, without management, without leaders, and doing very well. This is the uh, turnover growth. This year, it will be half a billion but it's still on one sheet. Um, we don't have a CFO, that's part of my work, two hours a week, it's the most easy part. Uh, so, 
If you have a CEO, a CFO in your company, you know where the problems come from. <laughs> uh, if you look at the results, from the start we had the highest patient satisfaction. At the moment it's 9.3. We had 1,200 new colleagues per year without doing any marketing. We got the prize for the best marketing in healthcare, but I said we are not doing any marketing. <laughs> It's the same with, with this best employee satisfaction. We don't have an HR department. So if you don't put effort in HR, you get the most satisfied employees. <laughs> so this is provocative, right? Uh, but it's the power of self-organization. Uh, still, they have a governance in place. They have platforms to support the employees, to support the self-organization. Uh, but what really matters is the impact uh, they have humanized healthcare. There are people in healthcare, the caretakers, could now spend their time with the patient instead of uh, all being overwhelmed by bureaucracy. And uh, so now you might think, yeah, but Mirko, this is a very easy business case. You know, then let's look at this. You might have heard of Hire. Chinese appliances company. This is the most advanced company on the planet that I know. And it's a 50 years old company with 80,000 employees currently, might be more. Uh, and they have gone through their fourth big transformation. And right now, they have, they're organized in team of teams. They call them micro enterprises. And one micro-enterprise is consisting of 10, 12 people cannot do anything, everything, right? There is design, selling, supply, production, and so forth. So they need to interconnect with other micro-enterprises and they form uh, micro-communities. And uh, what is interesting from a procurement perspective is those micro-communities, next slide, the, the, the red circle, they are organized uh, based on smart contracts. So traditionally, we would uh, negotiate one with one partner and another, go into negotiations, master service agreement, and so forth and so forth. What they do instead, they support all that with a platform based on smart contracts, and they agree, and that's, in my opinion, very innovative on mutual contracts. So they agree on what's your investment, what's your share in advance. And what's even more innovative, they update those more than 4,000 contracts every other month. That's the speed, that's the pace they are driving. And you can see the numbers, they are super successful, they have almost no bureaucracy. Uh, the, this is the most lean, agile, adoptable organization on the planet. Now, to sum this up, your organization might look like this, and there's nothing wrong about it. We need a formal structure, even by law. But our focus to be more adaptable, to be, become more agile, uh, to have less uh, bureaucracy to, to, to deal better with the, in an unpredictable context, uh, we need to shift our focus more to a value creation. Okay? So it's not either or, it's an and. So let me guide you through how to start with seven other short stories. And again, start small, Start where your biggest current challenge is, or start where you, you do see the biggest potential, uh, the biggest impact. So, if you, if you are in that stage, traditional, organized, uh, you might have some agile, crazy guys uh, already in uh, IT, R&D, or innovation. So, start to partner up. Get in, Get inspired what they do, how do they work. Uh, so you don't change nothing in your governance. And an example for that is 
One of our cases we got famous for is Swiss Casinos, a leading gambling uh, organization in Switzerland. They had this challenge to, uh, to replace their current ERP system. And they said, well, the, the schedule is too tight for a traditional approach. We need to organize us. We, we need to do it somehow different. We don't know. So they approached us. We have applied lean agile procurement. And the short story is we had three suppliers for two days in the same room, so shortlisted suppliers, co-creating their proposals, negotiating a draft of a contract, and even run a proof of concept in parallel so that at the end of the workshop, we could award, actually, that's a funny story, we awarded two because they had complementary knowledge. Uh, so we, we could award and sign the contract and continue delivery on the next day. It could become that fast. Little side note here, um, during that workshop, we found out that the licensing model, which is a huge cost driver, uh, we, have, we had forgotten it to prepare. And so we took the three competitors at one table and asked them, now you know the context. We have shared with you the information that we've prepared. Uh, could you please come up with the optimal licensing model together? And within 15 minutes, they were done. So that's the power of collaboration. Now, you don't need to change nothing on, on your rest of the organization. You just introduce lean natural procurement. We are still compliant. Uh, it's just another approach, a new method that Ahmed was talking about they are looking for. Maybe something to consider. So with lean natural procurement, we are in the meanwhile, since nine years, uh, having success stories all around the industries, the categories, both in public and private sector, and more and more also in energy, in uh, hardware, even cre creating uh, supply chains. Now let's move on. What's next? So if we have done some success stories, then often we learn a lot what are the limitations of the current governance, of the current processes, the po uh, policies, the current structure, if you will. And we start to apply, change slightly things that is in our authority. So it's a grassroots uh, development, if you will. Of course, we can force it always top down. So within our uh, borders, an example here is the Insel Group is uh, uh, a group of hospitals uh, with more than uh, 15,000 employees. And during the pandemic, they faced the challenge that their uh, supply chain organization was about to burn out. Uh, there was too much demand. And so we introduced some agile practices, uh, an agile portfolio management, where we could really from top down, so what's the strategy, what are the current objectives, uh, what are the supply chain objectives, create an alignment down into the category teams, even down to operational buying, and so that they were just working on what really matters to them. So once in a while, and in parallel, uh, we are doing optimization, digitalization. So you might not like it, but let's be honest. Operational buying will die, right? So what we, at this stage, what we do is also we, we might question the categories. Is this still the right way to structure us internally? We have seen companies that have given up this category concept. Again, it's very contextual. Might make sense, might not. An example here is Barclays. Uh, a British bank, uh, 2018, they already uh, pushed hard on digitalization, so that's the upper stream, with the, with the strategic objective of that the business that we, they serve the business with a platform for self-service. At the same time, and that is what we are seeing often, the companies are, or procurement leaders are forgetting is, they also started an initiative, what to do after, 
So what they did is they broke down the internal silos in procurement and supply chain and started to build cross-functional teams. And now they were able to take the more complex sourcing cases as a team and improve time to market just by 100% just because they were acting as a team, not yet applying lean natural procurement. So if we go back here, usually what happens is that the other departments also go on this journey. Very often they are already on that journey and the commercial functions are lagging and you guys need to keep up. So there is a tipping point where we even pull down the current functions. Because as I said, from a formal organization line chart or responsibility, it's still there. But our focus is shifting to value creation. So I'd be more organized like higher uh, in cross-functional team or team of teams. Uh, I called it here business cells. Now, where is procurement on that graph? Is it still in the center? Mm, maybe. Maybe to serve the rest of the organization with the needed platform and create the transparency. But also, that is the, the next example with Roche. Uh, they, they are currently turning their uh, procurement excellence organization into uh, enablement and capability organization. So instead of taking a task, uh, we are doing it for you. This, uh, we are enable you, the business, to do it yourself. And of course, there are different kind of collaborations. They could become part of the business for a temporary time. They could educate them. Uh, they could coach them and so forth. So it's happening. Now, let's look really, really far and Again, might not touch your whole business, maybe just for one business case uh, or for one certain problem. Um, what we are foreseeing is the next stage, currently the last stage in the evolution, is partner ecosystems. So this is the next stage of supply chain. Similar to what Hire does, where the company borders become fluid. It's more important to have the right products and services, uh, the right people at hand and access to it instead of negotiating and losing time and so on. So an exa two examples here. One is Lightyear. This is a c company from the Netherlands, a scale-up. Uh, they're aiming for the first solar-powered car. And uh, they got fascinated by our work in lean natural procurement and initially was, was, was thought supporting them in, an, in, a, in a strategic sourcing case turned into a whole transformation of their organization. So what you can see here is we have a team of team structure uh, which now is responsible, end-to-end -end responsible for parts of the car. What means end-to-end? It's no more just the R&D and then they hand it over uh, to a supplier to produce the, the, the parts, for example. No, the suppliers that are the production, they are part of this, for example, car structure organization. And uh, the, uh, also here, a little side, side note, uh, one of the key principles was that we introduced with them was we welcome change. Now, in hardware, that's the worst. They want to fix the design, the CAT, uh, and then build their tooling, build the industrialization, and then go into mass production. Well, Lightyear said, we might be never finished with our design. And so that introduced that mindset uh, and having a joint collaborative uh, organization then spread across all, our, all their partners, and they said, aha, okay. So we could use, instead of the very expensive tooling, tooling from rapid prototyping in production, but it doesn't last that long. We need to replace the tooling every other month, and we said, well, that's all awesome. Now we have an iteration. So we, have, we are flexible to change the system every other month. Another example, uh, 
Katie was already mentioning is uh, the joint development of the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, we were fortunate to have Ugo Soin, the CEO of BioNTech, at the World Agility Forum uh, last year, and he was speaking about that was the most complex thing they have ever done, and nobody could do it themselves, and nobody knew if they're going to make it. A multi-billion dollar investment, on the other hand, a multi-billion dollar potential return. So what they said, let's not waste our time in contract negotiations, let's just start. So they agreed on a minimum viable governance and obviously also a cost and a profit sharing split, and that was it. And as they went along uh, and it crystallized that they're going to be successful, they then incrementally adapted their contractual agreements in parallel. So don't slow you down. Don't slow the business down. Find new ways. So I want to leave you with three, three points. Uh, focus on digitalization, AI, ESG, all that stuff. But also, at the same time, think about, is your current governance still fit for purpose, or do we need to uh, adapt the organization at the same time? And if you do so, look at the most advanced organizations like Higher Boards Org and others. Maybe there is a source of inspiration. Maybe it's not nothing for you, not now, but th start to think in ecosystems. I was a little bit provocative. Will procurement survive? Do we, will we still have a procurement function? I don't believe, personally. But will procurement be still needed as a capability? Absolutely, yes. It will become even more important. And as I said, start today, start small, start around your current challenge, something that is worth it to, 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 uh, to solve. So this is Lean Action Procurement, the Alliance, and you're happy to download the the slide deck along with a white paper, and the first one will also uh, gain the book. Shukran. For you. We've got one question here today uh, from Fazi Al Haiti. He says, Where is the agile system best applied? At the strategic or operational level? Yeah, absolutely strategic. So if you apply it to operational commodity buying stuff, it could, uh, it generates overhead. Uh, so don't do it there. Uh, on the other hand, there's still a potential to improve your ways of working, like the example with uh, the Insel Group, the hospitals, uh, to streamline your work. You know, operational tasks, lean is the, is the way to go. Thank you very much. You're Let's welcome. give him a very big round of applause. Thank you.